So previously we've looked at how do we store data into a table. We've created those tables, we've looked at them, but now we want to see how they can relate to other tables. And that's the key component behind relational databases, is that data relates to other pieces of data. And we use the relational format for a variety of purposes. This includes everything from saving space and how much data we store, reducing the risk of errors, making updates and additions easier, as well as looking up data. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. I've got my database open and I want to edit my products table so I can specify what vendor I want to put in there. So I'm going to right click on products and choose design view. I can simply come up here and choose to insert a row up in my table design menu, or I can come down to the bottom row and insert it there. That's what I'm going to typically do. So I'm going to specify my vendor. But my vendor, you'll notice, is in a different table, vendors. So how am I going to get there? Well, I'm going to come over here to my lookup wizard. And when I click my lookup wizard, it's going to give me two options. So we're going to look at the first option, which is how do we look up values from another table? I'm going to choose next. I'm going to choose the table I want. Now, if I had queries, it could also be picked from a query. Typically, we're going to pick this from a table, though. We relate tables to other tables. I'm going to choose Next. I'm going to choose what fields do I want. I need to pick my primary key from my vendor table or whatever table I'm linking from. This is going to be the field value that I'm going to store so I can easily look it up and display that information. Now, that's just going to be a number. It's going to be like one, two, three, whatever. What I want to pick is something that's nicer to view. And so I'm going to pick vendor name as well. I'm going to click next. Here I can choose to sort and I can sort by up to four different fields. Now I only have two fields here. I'm going to choose vendor name. And I'm going to choose to sort in ascending order. If I click on the ascending order button, you'll notice I can swap that to be descending. Click next. Now this gives us a quick example of what data we're looking at. I've already added a couple of values into our vendor table so we can see something. Otherwise, you're going to see something like pound, name, question mark, because it doesn't know what to expect. There's two things I want to show you real quickly. First is the hide key column is checked, and that's by default. If we don't, we're going to see numbers, and that's going to be what's displayed to us, and we don't want that. So that's why it's recommended to hide that. The second thing you'll notice is my vendor name is a little small for how much space I have. So I'm going to come over here and just expand it a little bit so I can see everything. And I may choose to make it even larger if I need to. That way I always have the display, or I may choose to make it a little bit smaller. It just depends upon what my needs are. I obviously have to take this into consideration with how much space am I going to have on a form, in my data sheet view, etc. I'm going to choose Next. And this is going to be my last screen. There's a couple of things I can do right off the bat. For example, I can enable data integrity. Your data integrity rules are very important in relational databases. And what that means is if I go to delete a vendor, but I have products that link to that vendor, Access is not going to allow me. Now, if I do that data integrity, I have an option. That is, I can restrict the delete, which is the default, or I can choose to cascade the delete, which means delete any products that my vendor was attached to. I'm going to choose to enable data integrity, and I'm going to choose to restrict the delete. Notice that when I check that option, it does not allow me to have multiple values now. That's only if I don't enable data integrity. And if you remember your database principles, you shouldn't have multiple values in a single field. I'm going to click Finish. And it's going to say, hey, before I can create these actual relationships, can we save this? We're going to say yes. And it's going to save. 
Now, if you're looking at this, you're going to see that you have the vendor as a field name, but the data type is a number. Well, remember that, yes, we're displaying the name, but what's stored is that vendor ID value. Now, your lookup wizard has two options. One we saw, which is to look it up in a table. But let's look at another type of lookup. In this case, we're going to have a category. And I once again am going to choose Lookup Wizard. So I started to type LOO. It took me straight to Lookup Wizard. Click Enter. And now I'm going to choose the second option. I will type in the values I want. Choose Next. And you'll notice that I only have one column, but I have a place that I can enter these values in right here. So, for example, I might choose sporting. I'll choose another value, and I can go on and on. So, notice that I get a chance to add in my values I want. I could have a dozen of these. I could have two dozen of these. In some databases, this is referred to as an enum, or an enumerated list that you can pick from. I'm going to click Next. What label do I want for my lookup field? category. We're going to leave it like that. I have an interesting option here, which is I can limit the entries to what I've typed in earlier, or I can allow someone to type in a new value, and then that now becomes an option for other people to pick as well. I'm not going to limit to this list. That way, if I want to easily add it, I can. Then I'm going to click Finish. Notice that my data type is short text because that's what's going to display is that short text. That's what's actually stored. It's only my lookup that I have that list. Now you might go, well, where is that lookup? Well, under my field properties, we've been looking at properties under the general tab. In this case, I want to look at the lookup. And notice here my display control is a combo box. The row source is a list. What list? Here's the list right here, the one that I gave it. Now, all these other properties mean different things. And if you really get into Access, you can start to hone the way that Access looks and behaves by making changes to those fields. In this case, we're going to ignore those for now. That's not important to us. You might ask, well, was there something similar for Vendor? Well, the answer is yes, but also no. Let's look real quick at our vendor. And once again, we're on our lookup tab. Notice that I have, once again, a combo box, but now my row source is a table slash query. This says that we're getting information from another table. And you can see my row source is now a SQL select command. Now, as we look at queries and we look at select commands, you'll learn to be able to read this. And this is a very good tool. Quite often, I've needed to edit this to make it easier to use for an end user. So once again, all these properties mean things. And as you go about learning access and get better at it, you might want to start modifying some of these properties to create a better, more user-friendly database. At this point, we're not going to concern ourselves with it. We just want to show where that information was and how you create that lookup field.